Howdy, me Flowbart here, and welcome. I'm going to get some work done here on one of my projects. Uh, I'm going to be establishing... You see, I've already got a little cheesy um, health bar. What I'll do is go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Widgets. Shits in player hood. Go in here. Just going to scroll in. And I got a little... image which is just black I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger a little easier to see compile and save and boop, gone so there it's a little bit bigger you can see the health bar a little bit nicer now not that it's a hypercritical thing but yeah just want to see it there, this is just again a temporary health system uh, or health bar at least. So I'm going to go into my character, blueprints, go into my player base, gamepad input. Eh. I'm going to leave that in there. I I don't use gamepad, but doesn't mean somebody else may not. Um, startup stuff I've got created as a actual section here in a custom event. Um, custom events are your friend. View changer. I'll do a lot more organizing and neatening up, even though it's not horrible. Um, it could be some things changing. All right, so player stats. We have health. First thing I want to do is I've got it set as replicated, and that is so that when we start going into multiplayer, you're going to be able to replicate the the health system and see a health bar and that kind of stuff. So that's done. That's already good to go. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called max health. I don't normally do this, but you know what? Yeah, whatever. Create that as a float. Compile. Save. Don't have to hit save every time, but get in the habit of it. Set our max health is 100. And compile and save. Actually, we need to make sure that we put this in the player stats. And then let's go ahead and create one more. And that's not what I meant to do. Ugh. It's fun getting old, isn't it? Alright, so variable, call this min health. Not totally necessary, but whatever. You can never have too many damn variables. So we're going to put that in player stats. So compile and save. Player stats is just so I can actually minimize that and don't have to look at it all. So we're going to actually build a health system, health regeneration system, um, a death system, things of that nature. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a custom event. We're going to call this health check. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, and we're going to be using these right here, we want to get our health. So get a reference to health, and we want to check to see if our health is less than or equal to zero. And let's throw a branch node in there. Go back there. I didn't tell you to move. And with that branch, what we're doing is we're asking if our health is equal to or less than zero. Um, we're going to add another one is dead. And we're going to change that to a boolean. And put that in the category of player stats as well. So compile and save. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, then, well, let's be correct. We have a variable here. Um, our minimum health, even though that's zero, anyway, we want to check to see if our health is less than or equal to our minimum health. If true, then, Set is dead to true. That's going to come in handy when we actually put that into the animation blueprint. 
So, we're asking, is we dead at this point? All right, so tonight's drink of choice, Orange Crush, I know, big surprise, but with Alka-Seltzer cold formula, orange zest. It's like doubling up on the orange here. Usually I mix in um, emergency um, orange flavor. Really kick the buddy going. And so at this point, we're going to do the same thing for checking the minimum, but we also need to come down here and we're going to do the same thing for maximum. So we're going to get um, a reference to our health. And get reference to our max health. I'm sorry, guzzle that down really quickly. And then from here, we want to find out if it is greater than. Um, we're going to do greater than instead of greater than or equal to. If it is greater than our maximum health. So we need that branch node to come in here. So we're coming right there. Bring in that branch node. These guys need to move because, you know, I want to be neat. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and check to see if our health is greater than our maximum health. If so, we also need to do this as well. We need to bring in here and we need to set health to zero or we can drag in our minimum health. We don't have to drag in so many of them. We could have drug it off of there, but I just kind of want to make it a little bit neater. Set our health to our minimum health and set is dead to true. So that's what that's going to do is this is going to bring us into our death se sequence. But we need that variable there. Again, we'll get to that shortly. So now we're asking is our health greater than our maximum health? If so, then we want to and we can hold down the alternate key, left click and drag in to set health to control left click, drag in that so we can get a get a get bar. So we're going to set our health to that. This is just checking our health. Um, we don't actually need that in there, but we're going to use it. We're going to make it work. So again, all we've done here is we've created a health check system. And this health check custom event, let's go ahead and compile and save, is we're asking if our health is greater than or equal to. I'm kind of doing a twofold here. Um, I'm asking it if we're at zero or below zero. We're going to be dead, but we also need to set it to zero for our minimum health. Same note here, or a similar note here, we're going to ask if our health is is greater than our maximum health. If so, then we're going to set it to what our maximum health is. So we're not going to go below zero, and we're not going to go over 100. So this is just going to be our health check system, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, and health check, and since this is dealing with health check system, I'm actually going to go ahead and get the red color. So we're going to do one, zero, zero, and one, and I'm going to drag this up here because I want to save that color and then select OK. Now, anything dealing with health and damage and that kind of stuff is going to be in red. That way I have a quick reference to it. So now I can compile and save. Health check is done. Now, we're going to run a death system. And I may end up putting that custom event right there. So in our death, we're going to do custom event. And we're going to call this death. And there's a couple reasons why I'm doing it in a custom event as opposed to 
and a uh, function is because if I want to run a delay, you can't put a delay in a function, and it's just stupid. Um, so death. We want to get reference to is dead and a branch node. So we're asking is we dead? So our previous health check system is is something we're going to throw that custom event in to check our health. And we're going to incorporate that here shortly. So now we're just going to ask are we dead? If so, then we're going to run a bunch of other stuff off of here at some point. We're not going to do it just yet. So we just needed those two done. And I'm going to come back to death, but I'm just going to drag it over here just to get it out of the way. And then we're going to come back over here and we're going to do something else. We are going to get event any damage. Okay, from event any damage, what we're going to do here is we are going to get our health and we are going to drag off from there the minus key, float minus float. We're going to drag this damage to here. So, event any damage, man, there's a lot of sirens out there. So what that's going to do is it's going to check and it's going to apply the damage to our health. And then we want to do our health check here. So we need this in line with doing our damage and it's going to point us into our health check system over here and it's going to set our health. So we need to grab our health again, and we're going to alt, left click, drag it in, set health. Right there and there. And we're going to drag from here to there. So that's going to set our health. When we take damage, it's going to apply that, our health check system. And we can actually come back over here and now put in the death functionality because we've already established now that we're, we're checking our health and if it actually shows that we're dead we can run things off of that okay so this even any any damage is going to handle all of our health check situation for taking damage so now whenever it comes to this it's then going to run through and ask if we're below zero. It's, as if it's enough damage to kill us, then it's going to go through and run the death sequence. If not, then it's just going to apply the health and make sure it doesn't go above or below our minimum or maximum health. Simple enough, right? Alright, compost and save. And that's actually done for right now, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And event any damn damage Oh, sorry, you don't have to have any damn damage. So just event any damage. And I'm going to go back here. Since this is dealing with health, I'm going to go ahead and use that color. And there we go. Now, since this is kind of small and currently right now death, we're not going to mess with that because um, we're going to add more stuff to death later. So I was going to say, you just throw it in here and just lump it in together because it's all lonesome and stuff over by itself but you know what screw him you can sit right there mr death okay so what do we need to do when we are dead well i've already added in the animation starter pack so i need to actually create um a death sequence so for right now i'm going to start off with death one and i'm going to go to my animations folder create a new folder called death go back to my animation starter pack grab death one and I'm gonna right click on it and I can't right click on that yet because when you add the animation starter pack it decides it's gonna add its own special little UE4 mannequin uh, okay so with that we gotta do the same thing as we usually do is um, select humanoid rig and do the usuals 
up 50. And do this one down 10, back 20. And hand up 10. Gives us a decent T pose. Good enough to work with. Hey, you suck donkey ass. Get up there. 50, 10, 20, 10, modify pose, use current pose. You know how many times I've done this. Holy cow. All right, so that's good. And we'll do save all just because. And now we can come back over here and minimize that. Go back in the animation starter pack. Go to death one. We can right click on it and retarget animation asshole. I mean assets and SK polygon. And we're going to change the folder to character animations death. Okay. And retarget. Name of it's fine. Save all. Good to go. Double click. Let's take a look at it. Get your monkey ass up there. So there we go. We have a death animation. You know, boom, he falls over dead. I'm going to go ahead and pause that. I'll scroll all the way to the very end. He looks so happy. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to create an asset and create animation current pose. And I'm going to make sure I put that in my death animation folder. And I'm going to call this dead. And select OK. Now I'm going to close it. I'm going to hit save all because I do that a lot. Now if we double check that animation, it's only one damn frame, or zero frames actually, him laying there in a dead position. Beautiful. Not that he's dead, but you know, it, it's what we needed. So now if we go back to our animation folder, animation blueprints, go in here, and for fuck's sake, go up there. I don't like how this is set up, so I'm going to delete that comment box, delete that comment box, and that one. You can go over here next to you. Actually, you can come over here. or try to get pawn owner. I like you. You can stay there. You can go over here. I really, I, I have problems, you know. Things have to be a certain way. And you two, come on over there. Come on. You can do it. Put you like that and you like that. Isn't that much more pretty? Compile and save. All right. So now I'm going to create a new variable. Is dead. Okay. Now, we already have a variable in our player character, so we're going to call on that, the is dead. So what I want to do here is come in here, and we want to cast to player underscore base. Alrighty then, and then from try get pawn owner, I'm just going to snatch that puppy dog right over to here. And that's what we need. All right. As player base, we need to get is dead. And if it are true, then we need to set is dead. There we go. So we're just saying, OK, we're dead. Dead. So this is going to get us started on our death animation. Um, we're just checking with the player, seeing if he's dead. If he is, then we're going to use this variable inside of our anim graph. You can go there. Okay, you can go into the state machine from here. Um, we don't want it to happen while our player is jumping. So what we're going to start off with is we're going to drag out from idle and run, add a state. Begin to die. And we're going to go here and how do we enter this transition? Because we is dead. Okay. Go back in here and 
what are we going to do when we is dead? We are going to play death one. Link that to here. And now we're going to come back. After we do our death animation, we want to go to the dead animation. So dead. We is dead. So I'm going to link that one over to here. How do we get to this transition? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. So dead, we need to grab our dead animation. Connect that into here. Go back to our default. To get to that transition, we need ratio or time remaining ratio for death one. So for that death animation, we're going to get that and we're going to do float is greater than eh, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, whatever. So this is going to say, okay, when we're done doing the animation of death, we can then start doing the dead animation. And now, go back into here, and we want to go from dead back to idle and run. The only way that we can do that is if we are is dead not boolean. So the only way we can not be dead is if we not is dead, right? And can post and save. Technically, I think that's everything we need. I think. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. Death. Our simple death animation. Well, we don't have a way of dying just yet. So let's let's um give us some pain um let's do keyboard g sounds good to me g i don't know why but you know what screw it we're gonna do it anyway we are going to apply damage and why because we can what kind of damage we're going to do 25 damage every time we press the G key all right so we're running around we're all happy hit G it didn't work okay so um cause I'm trying to rush through it here damage actor it says nothing there but let's get a reference to self just to see if that helps so damage okay there we go we just lost 25 health lost 25 health and oh we're dead okay it just snapped into that position instead of actually um, instead of doing the animation so um, let's actually look see if we got everything correct in here reply to our damage and health check that is linked up kind of hard to see the red lines there because this is red but event any damage it's setting our health and then running health check and setting death set is dead um, we don't really need that because we've already said set is dead the true and death so um, I'm going to do another key right here keyboard R for respawn and that's just going to be go to player stats to set is dead to false and we can actually just come in here and just not worry about damage and let's just 
set is dead to true. So we can push G to die and R to undie. So we hit G. He's just plopping over. He's not actually doing the animation. So make sure to go back to my animation blueprint. And temporarily. Um, well, I see. Well, that that's that's fine. I'm gonna get rid of that for right now. And we just want to begin to die. We want to die. Set is dead to true, and then let's actually do that and actually get rid of that. We want to get this right. So let's go in here and ugh, nope, it's still plopping down. We don't want to just flop down. Um, death one. Is dead to true goes into this. Well, let's let's back it up. Let's keep backing it up. So this is all we have, and we just want to do the animation. Okay, and it's going to loop because we don't have anything else after that. So no problem. We want to go from begin to die to is dead and the way that we get to that transition is we need the time remaining ratio death one um, I always use that one I've never really tried this one time remaining If it is greater than 0.1, we can enter that transition. Like I said, normally I'd use the other one. So what we want to do is actually, oh, okay. Um, it went straight to this. It didn't actually even try to do the death animation. Oh, what is wrong with you, stupid blueprint? See, you just went straight to flopping over being dead. We don't want that. So let's actually try the other one. Even though we've already tried that. Um, ratio... Time remaining death one ratio nope still doing the same shit alright um well, I didn't notice is do that I'm not worried about that the, the health bar right now but it's just going straight to that. Had this problem earlier and I fixed it and forgot how I fixed it. So just one of those things. Because going back from dead to normal doesn't really matter all that much on how the animation looks because we want it to be fast. Not a billion. So if we're not dead. That's why we have the R key right here. So I don't have to keep hitting escape. I can die, respawn, die, respawn. And I'll actually come back in here and I'll fix the animation part. So the next thing we want to do is when we die, we have to stop our player from moving because that's just not right. So I'll come back. Like I said, I'll fix the animations later. 
And in our death sequence, the first thing we want to do is get a reference to our character movement. And we want to deactivate. We want to stop that movement. Stop all that wiggling around and stuff. We don't need all that nonsense. Alright, so now let's try running around and boom, we're dead. Yay, we're still moving. Did I not have death plugged in? It is on the health check. If we is dead, then run death. <laughs> okay. I did the same thing in a video earlier, and it was working just fine. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Okay, well, let's actually make sure that it's actually getting to this point because it's not it's not stopping the movement. Yeah, see, it, it should say hello whenever I, I go through the death sequence. So, um, it is not seeing that. Uh, because I, I'm I'm actually going straight to dead here I'm just setting is dead to true for some reason it's skipping through all of that on the health check because I have it set for checking for damage so that's why I ended up I had this thing earlier was any damage um, let's see event any really No. God, I quit being stupid. All right. Apply damage. Ugh. And what we're going to do here is get a reference to self. So we are damaging ourselves, and we want to do 150 damage. More than enough to actually kill us. So now if we do this and hit G, you see our health bar went to zero, we are dead. Hit R, we need to make sure that um, we're going to respawn on our respawn system. We go to that. So bang, we're dead. See it said hello. So that's good to go. So now I can, because I didn't run it through doing damage, I just did dead, and I don't need to do that. I need to apply damage to kill myself. So let's go ahead and do what we did before, get our character movement, and deactivate. This should now work because it's now getting to that point. And compile and save. So now come over here and uh, we're dead. We cannot move. We are no longer skating around planet Earth because we are dead. And then when we respawn, we can't move because we haven't said to be able to move yet. So I'll do that. I'll come in here, grab my character movement, and I want to activate so I can move again. Again, basic respawn system. We're just wanting to got to get up and get down, right? So let's hit G. We're dead. And then we'll hit the R to respawn, and we need to make sure that we set our health set health to our max health. So when we spawn, we have full health again. And that will fill our health bar back up. Goodbye and save, and then our health depletion and everything else should work normal. So we're dead. We respawn and we're able to move around and get a full health bar again. So that's lovely. Oh, dead. So I will fix that, um, the death animation thing. It's just, I'm not going to worry about it right now. I just wanted to be able to get the player to die and then be able to get a basic respawn system. So there we go. So the next thing is 
and we're going to leave these in here for now because this is our test system for killing and basic respawning. And our death sequence, we'll do more with that eventually. So that's that. We're going to die. That's it. Um, if we want to, we can set this as a um, delay and put this in for five seconds. So after five seconds, we can then set is dead to false and set our health back to max health. So this will be an automatic respawn now. And we're going to add to that. So, ooh, we died. Can't move, can't do anything. Five seconds later, we're back up and running. And I just need to reactivate my character movement. Which would be activate. Drag that on the end. And now our auto respawn is functional. But now here we want to go ahead and do a new variable. And we're going to call this our respawn location and I'm going to go ahead and change that to a transform compile and save now default by default we can leave it at 000 and 100 so 00100 so compost and save and now by default we're going to spawn in the center of the map so that's why I always say when you're building a map, start off in the dead center of the map and always have that as a good starting location. Because if your 000 location is there, then you, you, it's a known variable. Another way you can do that is if you have your player start in an area that just is 00100 is just not feasible, then what you can do is go into the actual map blueprint open level blueprint okay and carry your ass up there on event begin play I want to cast to player underscore base and I'm gonna go ahead and get player character what I want to do is I'm going to go into here, and I know that this is where my respawn is, where the player start is. This is the default starting location. When you pop that guy into the map, that's where your, your initial spawn is. And I can see that this is, and let's try it at 100 and verify that we're not going to fall through the world. Okay. So if we click on our player start, we have negative 700, 0, and 100. So now we can come in here and we can do it a couple different ways. We can get a variable and default spawn. We're going to make that a transform. Compile and save. Okay, so now we're going to grab that default spawn, drag it in here, and we're going to come over here and get respawn location. No, we want to set respawn location. So we're going to set our respawn location to our default spawn of the map itself. Now our default spawn location, we need to go ahead and set that in here. We know that, that was 100 and this was negative 700. Damn, why don't I just start getting frickin' old and start whistling whenever I talk. Because that would be frickin' awesome, wouldn't it? So, now if we hit play, we know that our respawn location is going to be there. So now we want to 
before we activate our character movement again, we want to go ahead and move our character to the new location. So let's set actor location and rotation. All right, lovely. And let's go ahead and get our respawn location. And we want to break that. Break it up. Break transform. So now we do the break transform and let's give us a little bit more room so we're a little bit neater. We can get our location and our rotation. Yay. So now we're going to get that respawn location. No matter what map we're on, now whenever we load into this map and we have this set up in our map bl uh, blueprint, by default, we will always have a respawn location so that if we die, no matter where we are on the map, if we die, our respawn is always going to be back to the original spawn location and the same orientation. Alright, so next thing I want to do is go ahead and create a I guess a, it, it's going to be useful later on but maybe not so much right now. Um, I'm going to go in here and go to my assets folder and I'm going to create another folder called Gadgets. And the first one I want to create is a Blueprint Actor. And we're going to call this our Checkpoint. Good thing about this checkpoint is it doesn't matter. You could put 47 of these into your map and it won't matter because that checkpoint will automatically update anytime it's needed. Whenever you step on a checkpoint or you, you cause that trigger to happen, it's going to work. So add a component. Now, not necessary, but again, I like to put in a cube. Um, I'm going to resize it to, well, yeah, just a 0.1 on the Z. Just a little small thing like that, and then I'm going to come in here, add a component of a box collision. And that box collision, I'm just going to go ahead and go 1.5 by 1. Point, damn it. 5 by 0.25. And I just want to put that right there. So as soon as we overlap onto this, we're going to set our, our, our spawn point. So, oh, cool. Yeah, go away. So we right click on our box collision, add event, on component begin overlap. We want to do these from other actor cast to player underscore base. And when we do that, we are going to set respawn location to there. It's complicated, I know. If I want to be a jackass, I can just do this also. Delay. And I'm going to take this back out. I'm just being goofy for right now. Two seconds later. Um, really? Um... Really? Okay. Launch character. Again, I'm not going to keep this in there. I'm just being goofy for right now. Alright, so just as a verification, we get in here and we actually need to put the checkpoint in. So I'm going to grab checkpoint and I'm going to stick it right here. And I'm going to stick another one right here. So 
So you see we got a left and a right. So now I've hit play. And I'm running around for some reason. I die. Oh no, I'm dead. I respawn back to my default spawn location that I, I started from. But now as I'm running around here, I'm playing in the map, and I'm doing my thing. Yay. I got a checkpoint. So now if I die, mm, dead. Where am I going to respawn? Back to default or uh, right into the world? So since our checkpoint here, um, we never set our respawn location. We never set that transform. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in, let's see if a scene component works for once. Go back to our event graph, compile and save, and let's get our scene component, put our Z height to 110. So we have our minimum height of 100. So let's actually see if you work. Grab reference to our scene. Get world transform. Now you could actually use an arrow, which would probably be even better, because you can set the direction of which way you want your player to be facing when they respawn. But this will be good enough for now. Hopefully you'll be able to come over here and do this. And we know that we are working. Now if we die, where's our respawn location going to be now? Yay, in the right location. Since we moved off of it, the launch character was still in effect, so... Yeah. Let's get rid of that. Goofiness. But we now know that it works. So now, um, we could also... I would say probably set up a widget to say checkpoint or something of that nature, but I'm just going to do print text and for right now um, checkpoint reached or re changed to current location whatever. So we're just putting in that, just so we have a, a visible acknowledgement that, hey, as we're running around, if we die now, oh no, we go back to our default spawn location. And then when we respawn, bloop, right, right back there. So now if we're running around and you see, checkpoint change to current location. So now if we die, we're going to go back to that one right over there. Boom. There we go. And it it change it again because we're in the collision box. So if we come over here and set it, then boop, we're dead. It'll respawn us at this location. So that's a good simple checkpoint system. Um, that works. Lovely. Alright, so what else can we do in setting up our character? We've got um, a health system and we can see our health bar. We have a death system. Again, I'll fix the animation here shortly. And whenever we die, we automatically respawn. And it's based off a checkpoint system. So if I set my checkpoint to be over here or wherever else, whenever I, I set up that system, we have a working checkpoint system, in other words. So wherever you set this in here. And now, keep in mind, you don't have to make a box and it has to be oh it has to be just like this no it doesn't have to be like that you can have it to where you can put this in there and use this but you could also come back in if you look in here and select the cube scroll down and click this right here hide in game compile and save now when you're in here it doesn't show up. We just set it. It works. It still works just fine. Now if we die, respawn, we'll go to our new checkpoint. See? Checkpoint works. But when we're in the map editor, we can see it plain as day. It's just that whenever we're in the map, it's not going to be there. It's not going to affect anything. So we could actually say, well, you have to go through 
this checkpoint. Let's do um, 100 by 100 by 300. So we have a visual reference. Hey, if you make it to this point here, you've made through the checkpoint. So if you're doing a jumping game or anything else, you know that when you go through there, boom, checkpoint. If you want it to be more evident and sounds and whatever, I mean, you could add sound effects to it. You could add particle effects to it. Um, anything. I mean, if I go into my effects right now and I could add in, let's see, whatever. I'm just gonna, excuse me. I'm trying to drag a single file. So, drag in that so we can have a file here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to not create a... Yeah, I'm going to create a sound cue for it. So we got fizzle cue, save all. And then what I'm going to do here is also create an attenuation because this is something that definitely needs to be done for a multiplayer. So you go to sound attenuation and we're going to have short. Short attenuation to me is something that is 400 to 1200. I hit save, close that, and now we we'll go into our fizzle queue. We set this up here. It's not looping, so that's good. Do this, set up our attenuation, is now short, save, and we're good. So now what's going to happen is we come over here and delete that, come in here, play sound at location. Damn, how are we going to get our location? Well, we can get our world transform, break it, and get our location from that, because we're getting it off of our scene. Uh, so we're going to hear this sound of fizzle Q, and it's not going to carry across the entire map. So we, we pass this checkpoint. Bum, bum, bum. We just made a checkpoint. But somebody five miles away is not going to hear the damn thing. So another thing really quickly, and it's very important for a couple different reasons and very useful for a lot of different things. We're going to... Yeah, let's go ahead and create a new blueprint actor and we're going to call this teleport base. So this is just going to be our base system for a teleport and again I'm going to go ahead and start off with a cube and we're going to do point 0.1 we're going to add a box collision and the box collision we just want to go ahead and size it 1 0.5 by 1.5 by 0.25. We don't want to get too carried away on the size of everything. So when we trip this, this is going to be our teleport system. And we're going to delete all that stuff. Right click on our box collision. Add event on component begin overlap. As soon as we overlap it, it's going to... Okay, let's make it um, cast to our player. and that's going to be our trigger. So if an NPC walks over it, it's not going to affect them whatsoever. Let's go ahead and play sound at location and we're going to do a couple different things here. I'm going to add that same fizzle cue in just for the heck of it. We're going to add in a variable and we're going to call this our um, return location okay and you're going to set that as a transform 
and I'm also going to go ahead and compost and save and I'm going to add an, a component of an arrow now the arrow itself I'm going to come in here and I want that for sure to be at least at 100 so that we're going to do that and with the arrow we're going to see a visible arrow now what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and doesn't matter how I have it set for rotation right now but I want to go ahead and move it off of the actual teleport pad because when we come back we don't want to automatically just teleport back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth we want to return location so I'm actually going to put this at 100 let's do it at 150 it's not something that I would normally do I would set up a separate system for returning but what I want to do is set this up as a return location so go in here and I don't need the checkpoint anymore we're going to need the player base here in just a moment so get our return location um, I'm also going to get the a reference to the cube and get world location so we can spawn our sound at that location very insignificant but we want to hear something we want some feedback um, now our return lo location blah, blah, can't talk we want to get a reference to that and what I want to do is get a reference to the arrow and actually we don't need that we need the arrow I always think I'm trying to be neat and organized and we need to set return location that'll be up here and we want to get the arrow get world transform so we want the transform of this guy I want to set that information right there so what's going to happen is now we go to set this into our level to start off with I'm going to go ahead and drag teleport base in here and I'm going to leave him visible so I want to see it for right now just because we're testing it so you can see I've got an arrow it's actually setting up my teleport coordinate of where I'm going to return back to is right here okay now where do we want to teleport to let's teleport to right here and now we have a return location um, let's go ahead and we want to teleport to here but then we're actually not going to be able to return because we don't want to have our landing also a teleport so we're actually going to go ahead and put it over here so we actually have somewhere else to land so screw it let's go ahead and let's just make a 100 by 300 by 10 just a little platform whatever yeah I'm just being so awesome right so what I want to do here is with that I've got the teleporter I want to teleport to somewhere but I don't have a location to go to yet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another blueprint actor landing base I'm just going to add base on there just because if I want to duplicate or whatever else so I want to add a component let's go ahead and put a screw it a cube just like before 
point one compile save and what I want to do is put my landing pad here now what I've done is I have this location is where I'm teleporting to and I just need to know that I am adding a hundred to this number okay so in my teleport base I'm getting my world location of where I am now essentially and I'm setting that as my return location and we can go into our player and let's create a new variable TP return location transform already so that's good so TP return location we want to teleport base we want to get in here TP return location we want to set that and it's going to jump that across to there so now we have our return location set in our player for our TP return location so with that TP return location and whenever we go to our next teleporter it's going to actually tell us where to go so teleport base um, the reason why we had the teleport landing place is so we can get in our information for our teleport so we know that it's uh, 455 so what we're going to end up doing here is we need to go from player base we need to set actor location and rotation so that we can get a full transform out of this now the trouble is is um okay so this is the same as this and this so we can actually break it from here so no matter where from either of these three but we're gonna break this right here we're gonna get our location new we can't do that let's get um that out of our brain and let's just do this this teleport is going to carry us to 455 and what is our Z uh, it's 50 and 405 that would be 50 and 405 so this is gonna be our teleport to get us to that location so if we just go ahead and hit play as we're running through here it teleports us to this location and now we can actually go over here and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the teleport landing base and TP return now as you're doing this it, with just one teleport location and, and a return it's no problem but what's going to happen is it'll get more complex as you go through you'll start setting up data and everything else let's go ahead and add our component of our box collision and we need to make sure we resize that 1.5 by 1.5 by 0.25 and in our event graph compile and save and on component begin overlap now we can actually copy in we don't need that one anymore we can copy in some of the same stuff here um, yeah whatever so now let's just go ahead and do it manually instead of getting lazy and copying and pasting let's go ahead and go from our other actor and cast to player underscore base we want to get our actually let's go ahead and get a reference to our cube get world location and because I'm a dork play sound at location and you suck donkey nuts get back where I had you 
Try to connect U to U and U fizzle Q. All right, and now that we've done that, we can actually get TP return location. And we can also set actor location and rotation. And we need to break that. So now we can get that information. Our location and our rotation. So essentially we have our teleport base. It's going to set up a return location for that teleporter. Now why would this actually be handy? And let's see if it actually works for one if we actually put the return pad in. The return pad actually has no um, arrows or anything else. We just want it to step on it and go somewhere. We just want to get it and go. So we come over here and we're standing in front of a building we want to enter. So this will be the, the door frame. We walk over to the door frame and we teleport inside the building. We're done doing our thing inside the building and we teleport back outside the building the opposite direction we came in. So we come inside. Oh look! You know we could set up an, the return, the TP return, the, an arrow as well so we know which way to face. So let's actually do that. Might as well. Whatever. You know. Um, and the TP landing. So in that we can actually go ahead and look in our viewport and let's add a component of an arrow and we just want to go ahead and we're not getting anything from the elevation from it but we could but we're not gonna um, all we're doing in here is just we have this arrow so from our teleport base this is our actual location we could actually come in here and set that. This is just one way of doing it. There, there's so many different ways you can configure this thing to, to do what you want. Um, I'm just setting up a quick return method. Um, I'm going to quit being complicated and kick out of this stream so I can go fix some other stuff. So essentially we have that. We walk in and it teleports us to there and then we teleport back out. Now, we are on this right here. If we were to teleport to the uh, actual teleport location, um, then what's going to happen is when we teleport to there, it's going to teleport us right back. So we don't want to really do a whole lot of teleport. So what I usually do is I set up instead of a teleport pad at a door, I walk over to it and I hit the E key and then it teleports me and then I come back over here I hit the E key again and it teleports me back so I'm just being lazy for right now and just showing you the the quick method for teleports because what I can do now is actually grab my floor control C and control V and just for the sake of I can grab this thing and shove it way over here and grab these two guys. Now here's the trouble is when you're setting up this guy, the the TP return, it's actually whenever you're actually doing the teleport to location. You need to have the um I'm gonna delete these two. And get this teleport landing base. And again, this is where you're going to actually have to get these coordinates when you're setting it up. And I would actually set this in a data or a structure system so you can store all the, the data for it. So now I can grab this arrow, the arrow from that, or just grab this information. I'm set on zero. 
So I can actually, I don't think it'll let me copy it here, but um, I'll grab this information, control C, and go to my teleport base, and set that information in there. You can store stuff in a structure that will allow you to, um, we'll do 110 there, and we'll do zero there. So that's where we're going to teleport to, is right here. And oh, because it's anchored right there, excuse me, negative 50. So compile and save. We're setting that teleport location to where we're going to teleport to. And then we have a TP return, which I will put right there. So if we come over here and hit that TP, see we're over here now, come over to that, and we teleport back. So that are that. Um, again, like I said, when you're setting up buildings that don't have an interior, and you want them to have an interior, or if you're setting up a hotel, and you have 500 rooms, and you don't want to make 500 rooms, you don't have to. You walk in front of the door, hit E to enter the door, and you teleport to a new spot somewhere else on the map that's actually the interior of that room. Yay! And then when you're ready to come back out, you stand in front of the door again, you hit the E key, and you teleport back. Simple enough. Alright, good enough, close enough, and I want to thank everybody if they were bored enough to watch me, and we'll see you later.